Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Rod and Staff podcast. I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek, and joining me today from California is the one and only Pastor Fred Price, Jr. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Uh, I have never met the pastor before, but through a mutual friend, we were able to set this up, and he was kind enough to oblige me. So uh, we're going to get in maybe in half an hour interview here and cover a number of topics that I think would be of interest to the to the viewers out here. Uh, first of all, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, when I started at Rama in 1982, the first thing we did in orientation was we watched Faith, Foolishness, or Presumption. Wow. Which I'm sure you're familiar with. It was a video series that they had taped of uh, Fred Price Sr., now known as Apostle Price. And uh, it was really eye-opening because it covered a lot of topics that uh, people got out of balance in certain areas. And the one thing that I remember the most, Pastor, is uh, he told the story of some woman who was trying to cast the calories out of her food Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I remember him, he, the, the subject was faith, foolishness or presumption. Sometimes people were doing things that were foolish in the name of faith. And I remember him saying, that's not faith, that's foolishness. And uh, there was another case where somebody was, uh, well, he was talking about birth control. And he said, what, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Because there were people who thought that they could just claim that they wouldn't get pregnant without using right. birth control. <laughs> right. Things like that. So it was really good to hear from somebody who had experience in this area, of, you know, clarify what faith is to get rid of a lot of the misconceptions that people had. And uh, that was the foundation for everything that we learned while I was at Rama, uh, Kenneth Hagin's school in Oklahoma. And uh, through the years, I've seen a lot of people get out of balance because they didn't have the benefit of going through that series like we did. Uh, yeah. So could you talk about that a little, a little bit about your experience where things get out of balance? Sure. Uh, faith, foolishness, or presumption is a really uh, great teaching series and a great book that my father wrote regarding uh, the mix-up that some people in the Word of Faith movement have when it comes to uh, walking by faith and you know, what or how to believe God for things. And uh, I've, I've seen it, you know, just personally over uh, my life. I'm thinking of one situation where uh, there was an individual who just refused to take medicine, refused to go to the doctor because they were standing on the word. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they passed away. We, I've seen that numerous times. Uh, my parents have seen it much more than I have. Um, individuals believing for a, another a man's spouse, another man's wife, uh, because of what Mark eleven twenty four 24 says. So uh, I've seen the imbalance. My father definitely saw it. And that's why he, he saw the need to teach that specific message because people can definitely and easily get into foolishness or presumption thinking that it's faith. Right. If they don't have that foundation, it's a, and that, that book is about 40 years old, I guess, now, but it's still a good book. For I'd recommend it to anybody out there listening. Yeah. Uh, so now I've been in the Word of Faith movement, like I said, uh, almost 40 years. And uh, I, I've seen people uh, who didn't have the benefit of going through that uh, get into foolishness with their finances to where they, you know, they go into debt. They write checks that, well, people don't write checks anymore, but back when people right. wrote checks, they would write a faith check when they didn't have the money in the bank account. No, that's not faith. That's being very presumptuous. And uh, so it really helps to get that good foundation. Okay, now uh, a few things that I wanted to cover uh, before we get uh, into your book is uh, the, well, i tell you what. I had a list here, but let's go ahead and get started on the book because... This just came out a few months back. Hold it up to the camera here. Behind the scene. This is an excellent book. Uh, I've had it for a couple of months now. Covers just about everything that you would want to know about the spirit realm, about, the, uh, about spiritual warfare, and uh, the occult, 
and all of these various topics. I'll, I'll let the pastor talk about this in a minute. But uh, it's, let's see, how many pages is this? 260-something pages long. It's just chock full of information about everything from uh, angels interacting with uh, the weather, uh, different false gods from various religions and so forth, the Nephilim, or Nephilim, however you pronounce that, the Watchers. Uh, it's, it, it's really fascinating. And, uh, well, let's just, first of all, how did you get started uh, researching and writing this book? So I started teaching, I started teaching in the Faith Dome in 2002. This was Father's Day. This was my very first message. Mm -hmm. From 2002, that was June of 2002, to December of 2003, I taught off and on a few times. And when I would teach, you know, that Saturday night, I'd be nervous. I'd fast all day. I would uh, prepare. I, I would be in the room by myself. I would uh, hardly uh, engage with anyone because I just I just wanted to hear from the Lord. Uh, but I was nervous. You know, it wasn't it, it was a new thing for me. It wasn't something that I was doing every Sunday. So it wasn't as natural for me as it was for my father. But something happened in January of 2004. I, I had been studying the subject of hell probably maybe a month or a month and a half. And I said, you know what? Why don't I share my findings with the people? And January of 2004 was the jumping point for my study into the supernatural. It began with studying hell, which led me to study demons, which led me to study angels. And I just kept going down the rabbit hole. So for the past 16 years, I have been uh, studying everything associated with the supernatural, the preternatural, and the paranormal. What is the definition of preternatural? So the preternatural is, is something that we initially might uh, explain as supernatural, but it can be explained rationally. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just like uh, things that go bump in the night. Right. That kind of thing. Right. Okay. So the, so the preternatural, be, it begins in a sense, or your search begins supernaturally, but you discover something rational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, as I was reading through the book, I noticed you were quoting people like Thomas Aquinas, which uh, if you're not familiar with Thomas Aquinas, he was the one who really emphasized reason and reason. faith. The age of reason, yeah. And uh, he played an important role in the development of Christian theology to where we don't go off into extremes, even though some people still tend to do that. Uh, Christianity has remained largely balanced when it comes to faith and reason because of the writings of Thomas Aquinas and others. Yeah, uh, so I, I take it uh, from what I read in your book that you have a, a real uh, love for theology and church history. Absolutely. Yeah, church history is one of my favorite subjects. I am getting ready to do a series uh, that's going to require me to really delve into church history and, and share some of the things that I've already discovered. And I look forward to new discoveries as well. But history is my favorite subject uh, because I believe it encompasses all things. If I'm studying history, I'm going to study the history of math. I'm going to study the history of science, etc. So church history is a part of that. But I love world history and theology also is a part of that. So yeah, I, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I'm a geek for it. Seriously. Yeah. I've heard you describe yourself as a geek in the past. So it wouldn't be inappropriate for me to refer to you that way because I'm, I have a background in it. I worked in the computer field for many years. So I have a, a love for technology as well as theology. I'm not so much into science fiction and, and uh, superheroes and stuff like that, like you are. Right. But, uh, I, one of the things that I do on my YouTube channel is apologetics. And I think that there's a, a real need within the charismatic community in general and the word of faith community uh, specifically to have a good grasp of apologetics, not just Christian apologetics or charismatic apologetics, but word of faith apologetics as well. And uh, you are the only word of faith person I have ever seen to debate a Calvinist. And I knew from that point on, well, this, this is a guy who gets it. <laughs> he understands that we have to be prepared to dialogue with people about right. 
what we believe and why we believe it. And uh, are you? You have uh, any other debates under your belt? No, none like that one. I'm I'm trying to think. Yeah, not really. I've I've had some discussions with individuals uh, in direct messaging or over text, but nothing like uh, what I did with Brother Woods. Mm -hmm. Which it was. It was a friendly debate. It it was not that contentious, but it was. It got intense a few times. Sure, it did. It it always tends. To, I mean, when you're when you're passionate about what you believe, and you're talking to somebody else who's passionate about what they believe, you have to expect that. But one of the reasons I have tended to avoid debate is because I I want to remain as civil as possible in discussing these topics. And you're well aware, I'm, I'm sure, of uh, all of the misconceptions that people have. Oh yeah, about the word of faith movement. Let me uh, just. Just for fun, I, I thought we'd do a little quiz here, and I'll go through a few names and, and get your input on this to see if it sure. matches my input. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, this is a little quiz called Word of Faith or Not Word of Faith. Uh, and the first one is real easy, Jimmy Swaggart. Oh, well, I would, I would say no. Um if I can just have a second with that, when I was a kid, uh, Kenneth Copeland would come on. This was Sunday morning. It would be Kenneth Copeland, then Jimmy Swagger, and, and then my father. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought back then that Jimmy Swagger was word of faith like Kenneth and my father. But later on, I found out that that wasn't necessarily the case. Clearly, he espoused some things, but wasn't totally at his core word of faith. Right. Uh, he is, or he was, for many years, Assembly of God. Yeah. And it's part of the Assembly of God uh, statement of faith that there's physical healing is provided in the atonement. Right. So from that standpoint, he was in agreement with Word of Faith, but he mm -hmm. took issue with a lot of other things that were being taught. So I would say he's not Word of yeah. Faith. Although I have heard one of uh, the Word of Faith critics refer to him as Word of Faith. Sure, absolutely. Okay, number two. T.D. Jakes. Not word of faith. Not word of faith. All right. A lot of people would dispute that because yes, they would because he believes in prosperity. But not everybody who believes in prosperity is word of faith. If you understand what word of faith is. Absolutely. And, and this is not a knock against either one of these guys. We're just trying to clarify, you know, uh, who is and who isn't because there's so many misconceptions out there. And, and I've, ha I've had discussions with individuals. Uh, I imagine some of the names you're going to say where those who are against word of faith assume that they are word of faith because like you said, they may believe in prosperity or they may teach on Proverbs 18, 21. But once again, if you, if you uh, break down and really assess all that they brought to the table, doctrinally, you'll find out, yeah, they're not word of faith. Right. Number three, Creflo dollar. Word of faith. Word of faith. Yes. Don't agree with everything that he says, but I would say he's word of faith. Number four, Benny Hinn. Ah, this has always been an interesting one. He, he, he's always been lumped into the word of faith category. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I strongly lean toward it. I don't know if I'd say 100%, but I would say more word of faith than not. That's mm -hmm. kind of where I fall. We, he definitely believes in prosperity and, definitely. and healing in the atonement. Definitely. But uh, I, will, I will send you a link to statements he made in a 1993 interview with Charisma Magazine where he kind of separated himself from the Word of Faith movement. Right. Uh, so I would say he's, Benny Hinn is not Word of Faith. I, I've said that in several of my videos uh, because people, you know, sometimes people just kind of lazy and they want to lump everybody together. They are. Uh, of actually taking on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, number five, he's passed away, but uh, John Osteen. Uh, I would say word of faith. Word of faith. I would yeah. say word of faith. Yeah, he was good friends with Kenneth Hagen. Yeah. At, As a, uh, here's a nugget. Here's a nugget. Um, okay. Kenneth Hagen uh, prophesied to my mother that uh, the child she was, because they got pregnant, my mother got pregnant late, mm -hmm. and it was unexpected. And at a camp meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, 
my parents were in the room with Kenneth Hagin. It might have been in between sessions or after a session. And Kenneth Hagin prophesied that the child in my mother's womb was me. And John Osteen was in the room. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, because I knew that Brother Hagin had prophesied over your dad that uh, God was going to use him to take the message of faith to the African American community. Mm-hmm. Boy, did that did that happen? <laughs> right. Yeah, I would say John Osteen is word of faith. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Joel Osteen. Yeah. So clearly, word of faith roots, and mm-hmm. and and you can hear in his his articulation of what he shares. Uh, and I, I want to focus on, on sharing because, mm-hmm. and this is definitely not a knock, but he's not really known as a teacher, as an espouser of, of the word, but you can hear the word of faith influence in what he shares. Right. So word of faith roots. Definitely. But, you know, I, I, I don't know if right now, present day, I would say word of faith. I, it's an interesting one. Right. Like I said, it starts to get a little tricky now. Uh, I, I definitely word of faith roots, but I would say Joel. I would categorize him as word of faith light. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's good. I like that because he kind of he gets into some areas where uh, his verbiage is not necessarily word of faith, and sometimes he borrows from non-Christian sources. Uh, right. Like, positive thinking, yeah, yeah, motivational uh, speakers, that kind of thing. Which, again, I'm, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just trying to clarify here. Because, no, that's good. We need the clarification. We need it. Okay. Uh, number seven, Bill Johnson. Uh, I, I, who? Mm, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say word of faith. All right. You're correct. Yeah. <laughs> According to my uh, sure. my notes here, uh, Bill Johnson's theological roots, well, he was Assembly of God, and then he came into the Signs and Wonders movement right. under John Wimber, and then he went to the Toronto Blessing, John Arnott. Blessing. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so there's certainly a lot of overlap theologically, but there's also a lot of things that would... Uh, you may, there's, there are distinctions you could make between what right. he says and what word of faith people would say. So I would say not word of faith, but a certain amount of overlap. Right. Rod, Rod Parsley. Uh, that's another good one, but I would not say word of faith. Mm. Okay. Again, a lot of overlap. A lot of overlap. His, ma- his mentor was Lester Sumrall. And Lester yeah. Sumrall wasn't really word of faith. He, he wasn't. He was not. But everybody loved him. Everybody loved him, right. <laughs> we all loved him because, well, he knew Smith Wigglesworth. How could you not love somebody could, who was Smith How could Wigglesworth? you not? Exactly. Right. Uh, number nine, Todd White. You got, you got, a, pretty, you got a pretty tough list. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm leaning towards no. Okay. The tricky thing here is that his mentor, Dan Moeller, went to Rama. Went to Kenneth Hagin's school. So I, while I would say Dan Moeller at least was word of faith, Todd White does seem to have gravitated more toward the signs and wonders stream of the yeah. charismatic movement. So I would say he's borderline. Borderline. That's yeah. good. And number 10, the last one, Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer. I, you know, I, if, if you said Marilyn Hickey, I'd say word of faith. Yeah. Saying Joyce Meyer, I, I, I think there's overlap there also. Yeah, that's another tricky one because she's definitely said some things that were word of faith, but then she's kind of backed away. Clearly. From some of those things too. So she's kind of in a gray area there. Uh, but just the, the main thing I wanted to bring out here is that not everybody who believes in prosperity is word of faith. Not everybody who prays for the sick, like Benny Hinn, because some people think, well, if you're a faith healer, you're word of faith. No, right. it doesn't work that way. Exactly. Catherine Kuhlman prayed for the sick, but she wasn't word of faith. Right. Because, uh, well, 
I, I'll wait until you say something and then I'll give you my definition. I think uh, we need to we need to clarify what the theological distinctive is of word of faith. What would you say? Uh, word of faith. I don't I don't know how to do it in a few words. Um, but, you know, word, word of faith, you know, we, we believe in uh, the lifestyle of faith. You know, we we do believe that you'll you'll have what you say, but it's based on the word, mm -hmm. not just whatever. Right. And, 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 and we get accused of, you know, well, they just believe that, you know, whatever, whatever you say you'll have. And that, that's not the case. It's whatever you say that's in line with God's word. Exactly. We, um, did, we did not rehearse this, but this is exactly what I've been telling people. Wow. It's not blab it and grab it. Right. You have to have a solid foundation in the Word of God for what you're believing for. And then you stand on that because if, if God revealed that to be His will in His Word, then you can rest assured you're praying in God's will. That's it. That's it. I mean, we, we 1 John 5, 14 and 15, to me, are the, are the best uh, two scriptures uh, when it comes to literally explaining what the prayer of faith is. Of course, the operation of it is Mark eleven twenty four, but but first John five fourteen and fifteen. That's what we stand on. So if it's if it's not according to His will, then He didn't hear me. But right. if it is according to His will, then He heard me, and so that's what we stand on. Uh, you know, word of faith. We we believe in prosperity. Uh, we believe that it is God's will that His people flourish in every fa aspect of life, but we don't believe that it just happens automatically. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, if, if, if your word of faith, you are charismatic, you know, you, you believe in the charismata, you believe in the gifts of the spirit, right. but I do believe that word of faith charismatics uh, are a little once again, this is not a knock, but I think there's a little balance there with our uh, charismatic beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, not that all charismatics, apart from word of faith, are imbalanced, but I've seen some that are just a bit extreme. And, right. you know, when you look at them, you would you could easily say that they are not word of faith, but they are charismatic. But I think that's kind of where the where some of the naysayers have come up with charismaniacs or charismania. Right. Uh, let's see. I would list, I, I would sum it up like this. You can have what you say, which is exactly what you said a minute ago. Now, that is just a few words to sum up a large volume of theology, just like when we say justification by faith. When you say justification by faith, that doesn't mean all you have to do is believe in God and you'll go to heaven. Right. It's just a, 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 a three-word expression for a theology that has been evolving over 500 years. And it's real easy to straw man the theology when you say you can have what you say. Absolutely. And dismiss a large uh, volume of what's been written and taught and clarified over the last 45 years or so. So uh, that's, it sounds like we're kind of in sync here. We may not say it exactly the same, right. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Word of faith is very confession oriented. Sure. And you don't really hear that from the people that we were saying are not word of faith. Like Vinnie Hen doesn't really talk. He used to. He used to talk about confession back in the 80s, but he got away from that and he started talking more about, uh, you know, miracles and the anointing. Uh, so that, in case anybody is wondering, that's kind of what uh, sets word of faith apart from other streams of the charismatic movement. So let's uh, let's just get back into the book a little bit, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, what is it that uh, that you were trying to accomplish? Again, behind the scene, S E E N. Uh, what was it you were trying to accomplish in writing the book? I wanted to share with God's people uh, what's going on in the realm that we do not see. Uh, first, I, I want them to know that there is a world, and, and maybe some have heard there's a spirit world or a spirit realm, but what's really going on uh, in that realm? And so I wanted to share uh, what's happening behind the scene, behind the S-E-E-N, uh, the, the, the spiritual warfare happening over there uh, that's a little bit different than the spiritual warfare that we're fighting in this scene realm. 
Uh, I wanted individuals to know that there are things happening in the invisible realm that are affecting what's going on in the natural realm, but that also God's people have the ability to cause some disruptions uh, in, in, in a good sense mm -hmm. uh, based on what we do in this natural realm. And we can affect some things that go on in the, nat in, in the invisible realm, which would then affect things in the natural realm. Uh, you know, I wanted uh, to articulate uh, the differences between angels and demons. I wanted people to have clarity on that. You know, we've heard some things over the years and we just uh, accepted them because they sounded like they made sense. Uh, I wanted people to know uh, the origins of pagan deities. You know, we, we clearly see many of them uh, mentioned in the Old Covenant. Uh, people may wonder, are they real? And if they are real, how is it possible that other gods can exist? I wanted people to know the origin of that, what, what that comes from. Um, I really just wanted a manual for believers to have uh, regarding things supernatural. Mm. And, and you've got that because this is very thorough. You know, and one of the fascinating things in, in reading the book, uh, you mentioned that uh, stars are representative of celestial beings. And some of them are good and some of them are bad. Like, uh, you know, we, we war, there's war going on in the heavenlies and uh, there's angelic beings there. Uh, but some of them are evil uh, angelic beings, but some of them are good because you mentioned a war in Israel where they saw lights uh, coming to the defense of the Israeli troops. Yeah. Yeah, that was fascinating. You know, yeah, I, 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 heard, I heard that from a, a Dr. Hilton Sutton who was, he was word of faith, mm -hmm. uh, but he was a uh, revelation teacher. He was, he was eschatology. And, uh, and I remember being in a meeting with him and he shared that information and caused me to dig into that. Yeah, it's really cool. And in the book, he talks, uh, Pastor Fred talks about his experience with uh, a UFO. I just did a video a few weeks ago where I talked about an experience I had with a Scientologist where a star we were looking at suddenly was gone. Wow. And he, he said it was a spaceship. It was the Markabians. Now, you're out there in California. You've probably run into a few Scientologists. But uh, they believe in the Markabians. And he, he was telling me about the Markabians. And I didn't know what to think. And all of a sudden, that star he was pointing at was gone. But he says, no, it's not gone. The light just, uh, they turn their lights off when they know that they've been spotted. And that really freaked me out. And, and I struggled with my faith for a while. Finally, I just said, you know, I believe the word of God. I don't know what happened with that star, but, you know, I don't believe in Markabians. I don't believe in reincarnation. I don't believe in Scientology. Right. And, uh, and I was free from that point on. But, you know, uh, demonic, satanic uh, experience can a lot of times lead people off into deception. Absolutely. I mean, that's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that seemed to be one of the points that you were making um, in the book. So, well, I appreciate your time. I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, it was it was great to get a foundation now in and you know having a conversation about some of these things that I think need to be emphasized. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you have uh, a grasp of theology and academia that we can use, uh, not just emphasizing faith all the time, but also emphasizing you know systematic theology as well. And I'm kind of building a network of like-minded theologians so that we can have panel discussions about some of these things and so forth in the future. So hopefully we can include you in some of that in the future. Absolutely. And I thoroughly enjoyed this and I, I love what you're doing. I believe that there should be some word of faith defenders of the faith. They, they, they need to uh, exist and it needs to be known that, you know, we're, we're out here and we, you know, in the process of defending, we want to bring clarity to what word of faith really is. Exactly. Okay. Well, God bless you, pastor. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. Blessings.